Welcome to Key Points for March. This month, not surprisingly, our focus is around the tragic developments in Ukraine and what this means from a geopolitical perspective, how it's likely to impact global growth, and how the financial markets are likely to respond going forward. Now, to the first point, I think there is no doubt that the scale and the extent of the uh, invasion by Russian forces into Ukraine has surprised many. But I think it's quite telling the response that we're seeing globally in terms of sanctions that are being posed on the Russian regime. The Biden administration seems to have stepped up and take the leader, taken a leadership role in orchestrating this, but also we're seeing quite a profound actions being ratcheted up across the globe. I think importantly, while there's been no direct military intervention, what's happening in Europe, and particularly the Eurozone, is encouraging. This is forcing uh, the group to work collectively together. And we've seen quite a dramatic shift in position by Germany, not only providing military equipment directly, but also increasing its commitment to NATO going forward. Again, that's something that we think is quite considerable as well. But these sanctions that are being posed are really quite penal. They were slow to start, but we've seen them being gradually escalated to the point where now we're seeing it having a truly meaningful impact in terms of the Russian economy and the Russian regime. Not least, of course, is in terms of the payment system uh, that is being posed or constrained on Russian banks. Now, this will have an impact on some of the European banks as well, but this is largely being priced by markets as well, and we think is certainly manageable. Now, when we think about the economic impact of this, Russia itself is a relatively small economy in the global scheme of things, roughly about 2.5% of GDP. But of course, the impact of the, the transmission mechanism really is through the energy markets, where of course it is still a significant player in terms of oil and gas. And we have seen oil prices spike above $100, and gas prices in Europe, of course, have surged as well. And this is going to be a significant challenge because, of course, this is one area where Europe is still dependent on U uh, Russian supply. But it's also quite telling that, of course, the sanctions didn't extend to the energy sector, which, of course, would be effectively uh, impeding the European uh, growth engine as well. But these higher prices are going to be adding to additional upward pressure in terms of inflation at a time where, of course, we know the global economy perhaps can least afford us. The central banks have already, of course, been shifting quite dramatically to a tightening position. Now, while we believe that, of course, the direction of travel for these central banks is still higher, they will, of course, focus on their inflation mandates. And again, we're expecting the US Fed to move in March. We think they will be pragmatic about the situation and, of course, alter policy where things to deteriorate any further. So broadly speaking, the impact globally of the situation is still relatively modest, but it clearly has got to be one that is, is monitored because confidence is very important when it comes to things like consumer spending and business investment. And this takes us to our third point around the financial markets. Historically, when we look at conflict, generally it's not been a, a big obstacle for equity markets, for example. There's an old adage where you sell on the rumour and you buy the news. And certainly when we look at recent uh, uh, crises in the past, which we show in the report graphically, we can see that often financial markets, equity markets sell off in the lead up to war. But once we actually see the war getting underway, the markets tend to rally as investors discount uh, an outcome. They get rid of the, the, uh, the uncertainty that's there and be, begin to price in the end of that war. And certainly history is an indication that equity markets are likely to do well on that front. This time we think that is possibly likely to be the case again, but the nature of this conflict is one that's going to be very important to that outcome. If we find that things get bogged down, if we find that the Russian expansion is beyond the borders of Ukraine, I think that could have a materially negative impact in terms of global financial markets. Currently, however, that's not our base case, and we do see upside ahead, but the volatility and the uncertainty around that is clearly very significant. Now, the full report, as always, can be read on zurich.com forward slash MSME.